Well, we have this massive uh, oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico in the northern part. Uh, and of course here in South Florida, uh, we're very interested in how that may have some influence on our uh, marine habitat. The fisheries impact of this spill probably are going to be major. So we have this uh, type of current which enters uh, Gulf of Mexico through the Yucatan Channel and it's called here the loop current. Loop current, it produces little loop here going little bit up north, but this loop is oscillating, it may move up and down. And then uh, this current enters the Straits of Florida where it's again called uh, the Florida current. Uh, and uh, when it leaves the Florida current, it is Gulf Stream. We are certain that uh, there's such a massive oil spill and it's so relatively close to the loop current that at some point oil is going to be entrained in the loop current. Things that get in the loop current can travel all the way from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up uh, through the Straits of Florida, past Fort Lauderdale into Palm Beach, all the way up. Whether it stays inshore or offshore isn't really going to make a difference because there's still going to be fisheries impacted. Well, there's concerns all along the west coast of Florida and in Florida Bay and uh, along the south part of Florida and in our coast about uh, kind of three major environments uh, which include uh, seagrass, mangrove forests, and coral reefs. And all of those are sensitive uh, in various degrees to effects of oil spills. If it stays inshore, then you impact the whole suite of coastal fisheries. Oysters, crabs, shrimp, uh, things like your snappers and groupers, your tarpon, your snook, major commercial and recreational species. If on the other hand it stays offshore, then you impact a whole different suite of fish, things like tunas and sailfish and marlin, uh, mahi or kingfish, uh, kind of your enigmatic uh, fish for the state of Florida and its recreational fisheries. Things like uh, bluefin tuna spawn in the northern Gulf of Mexico around this time of year. So this is probably the worst time to have a major oil spill right in the middle of the spawning event for an otherwise extremely depleted population. We have extensive coral reef ecosystems here in Florida uh, that not only are world resources but, but are uh, you know, national resources of great importance. Hugely economically important in South Florida. We're already growing corals and the reason we're growing corals is that coral reefs are already stressed ecosystems, otherwise we wouldn't have a reason to do this. So um, having uh, an oil impact would just sort of exacerbate the problem. Corals aren't, they're not like a sea otter or something, you can't pull them out and wash them off and put them back in the ocean. They're very sensitive and they're attached to the bottom. How are you going to stop the oil from getting at the coral reef? There's not many ways other than booms and booms are probably impractical in a coral reef situation. And we found that dispersed oil was very detrimental to coral reefs, but very positive effects to mangrove forests. It's a trade-off. If you have an open area where there's no reef but a mangrove forest, dispersed oil would be the method of choice. But if a coral reef is in the way, uh, you have to value, decide what, what ecosystem you're going to protect. There's endangered species that, that live both in the Gulf of Mexico and here, so, you know, including sperm whales. This is the beginning of the nesting season for uh, sea turtles. It, start, it starts in April and goes into October, and, and during that time they come to the beach and lay, nests and lay their eggs in nests and then hatch throughout that time. With mammals and, and turtles as well, they, they're, since they're, they have to surface to breathe, um, if there's oil in the way, this is going to obviously impact their, their ability to get to the surface to breathe. The economic effects to fisheries are already being felt. The worst case scenario is, is that it gets into both the pelagic and coastal uh, ecosystems where you've got fisheries impacts on both sides. Uh, best case scenario is that they cap the well quickly and that this problem be mitigated that way. It's already in a worst case, not worst case, but growing worst case scenario where there are no good outcomes I think at this point for fisheries. It's disheartening, it's discouraging. Um, it's a lot of oil and uh, given wind and waves and currents, some of it's going to reach us.